A realization that came to me as I contemplated recently brought me the memory of a diagram I designed back in 2010. At the time, I saw crosses as a symbol for an obstacle instead of a symbol for balance, and neither views invalidate each other as true symbols will always carry more than one truth remembrance effect. So, if we consider that at the top point of a cross is truth and life, and at the bottom point is the individual manifesting in the world of matter, the horizontal left and right points of a cross would represent, in that context, a veil or barrier, preventing a direct vertical connection, so a vertical connection between truth and life and the individual manifesting in the world of matter. In that sense, it would be the same type of shadow puppet play as in Plato's allegory of the cave, where the identification with the shadows moving and being projected onto the walls was what prevented anyone from seeing the truth outside. If we consider this present world, just as it is, as a realm that is upside down in terms of what truth life uh, would be manifesting like, then we can use a metaphor to better understand what could be standing in between to prevent that direct living manifestation. So, let us imagine, as we did in previous contemplations, that absolute truth and life is a source of pure light. That light would normally illuminate its emanated material representations in a dreamed-up world chosen to be made manifest. In that sense, imagine the truth decided to hold a theater play. In regular th theater plays, the actors are performing their parts at that very moment, by choice, and retain all the memory of who they are outside of the play. Everyone participating knows that it's a play, and knows that there is an agreed-upon script, and can, regardless of any inconvenience to the stage manager, leave the stage at any time, given that the theater emanated from truth is not a business. However, something formed in between the light of truth and the theater stage in matter, that, instead of allowing full visibility of the actors and characters and action, started casting shadows that had themselves characters, action and an alternative script. In a way, cinema was born in this metaphor or allegory. As the light that once directly illuminated their willing play dimmed, given the objects that now stood in its way and that cast shadows on the stage walls, the actors that were playing the original chosen and conscious characters agreed upon script that they could leave at any time, began watching this secondary script, played by shadow characters projected onto the stage walls, just like a shadow puppet play or a cinema movie. Therefore, in this metaphor or allegory, the actors that were performing the play on a stage illuminated directly by the light of truth began watching the movie projected by the film that now stood in between the light and the stage, as the room dimmed further and further into darkness and the images projected on the walls became more and more vivid. So vivid was it that the actors forgot not only the original play script that they had agreed upon, but also forgot that they were actors originally, from truth themselves. In the same way a viewer can be moved by and identifies with the story and characters in a movie, so were the actors lost on the cinema seats as they sat to watch that newly projected vivid images, even forgetting the fact that they were suddenly in darkness, and that, therefore, despite that light being cast by truth, something covered it and projected falsehood using that very same light. In a movie, the character is never the actor, because it is pre-recorded. In that way, if one could imagine that a movie character suddenly became self-aware, it would not know that it is in fact an actor, 
playing that part in a movie. Sort of what happens in The Last Action Hero with Schwarzenegger. So in this metaphor, theater represents true emanated manifestation, as it requires as follows. 1. Willing actors that do not forget who they are. 2. An agreed-upon script played right there and then in the moment. 3. A direct light illuminating completely the stage where the action is taking place. And 4. The choice of quitting the play at any time. While cinema represents the false projection of scripts, that the more it covered the direct illumination of the stage and made it dark, the more vivid and defined seemed to be its projected alternatives. So cinema, in contrast, therefore requires 1. Pre-recorded segments played by the actors who, while in the movie, only believe they are the characters and do not remember the actors they are. 2. A script directed, applied and then edited by the director of the movie, pre-planned and never performed in the moment. 3. A dark stage room where the only light coming from truth is cast through the film placed in front of it, therefore projecting that false film. 4. The inability for the characters, who forgot they are actors, to quit the movie, because it is pre-recorded and so will play out until the film ends. So now that we have this metaphor or allegory contrasting theater performed in the moment willingly by the actors and pre-recorded cinema films where the actors become the characters in that production, we can perhaps contemplate on what is that film, that object, that veil that stands in between direct truth light and the stage of matter where we are. For us here, as metaphorical characters in a movie, truth, or that direct light, can only be known for what it is not, that is, by observing everything in this film projection that is not truth. And everything that is not truth, or light, are therefore shadow shapes. What forms them? Well. I will present my own realization which is only worth as much as that for you to contemplate upon yourself. We normally imagine the underworld, as the name seems to imply, as residing underneath the stage of matter. Well, in my view, there are certainly material hells, far grosser and more grotesque, underneath the stage level we are in right now, but the actual underworld, or Hades, is slightly above, in a relative sense, not absolute, the stage. And it is that world that stands in between direct truth light and the stage, originally conceived for theater and not cinema. What is this underworld, or movie film, being projected onto the now dark stage chamber made up of? In my opinion, and realization it is made up of 1. The actor's identification with the characters they did not themselves agree upon and write for the original theater play 2. The frustrations and repressions of aspects of the characters played over and over that they do not agree with in the same sense of a Jungian shadow and 3. The ignorance, or better said, the amnesia on the actor's part in relation to who he truly is, which feeds the identification with the character on the movie instead and not the original, agreed and willing character for the theater play, where truth would shine upon directly. So the more identifications with falsehood we cultivate, the more that underworld will have substance to project fo false movies with, as it uses the only light source available, which is truth, to project into a now dark room that originally shone with direct truth light and life.
This is what death means. The character reaching the end of its part in the projected movie. Yet the character dies because it is false, but the actor that played it lives on, as it is truly immortal. However, when a character dies, does the actor choose to remember his true source or to remember the bits and pieces of his many played characters, even from past movies projected long ago in time? You see, we repress truth if we live and identify as characters, because truth would kill us off and reveal us as actors. So we create these dark spots, dark caves and dungeons, in our place in that underworld, to where we exile the doubts regarding our identification with the character, that then work as a template to be projected back at us on the cinema screen, faithfully, or so we think, in the lower scripts of the cinema movie of falsehood. Then one thing feeds the other, like the Ouroboros that either eats its own tail or speaks its own tale into manifestation, depending on your preference. The character represses that which he does not want to see about his predicament, about living in a movie, about being an imperfect existence, and creates dark corners in the actor's soul to where it exiles these repressed monsters. The monsters themselves, feeling ignored and abandoned by their creators, strike back at them, as the movies keep being projected with those dark corners working as the film in front of the light of truth. For anyone who read the original Frankenstein novel, not any of the awful adaptations around it, this is exactly what is being depicted. The character Dr. Frankenstein animates a conjunction of dead bodies into a monster and gives it a resemblance of life. Then. In horror of what he created, he rejects and abandons the monster, trying to forget its very existence in shame and horror and regret. Yet the monster does not cease to exist just by being ignored. Quite contrarily, it is only put at peace when he finally faces his creator Dr. Frankenstein, and the creator faces him, who, having had all his character-identified life, destroyed by the monster he himself created, projected back at him, finally accepts that the monster reflected himself. If you do not have the book in the uh, Recommendations to Contemplate on playlist in this channel, there is an audiobook version of the novel Frankenstein. Highly recommended if you never read it. So, since we acting as characters and not the original actors, are the ones producing the shadow forms that stand in between us and the stage of matter and the pure light and life of truth, we should strive to examine closely the darkest corners of our souls and bring them to our attention. Yes, I am certain many monsters are there, hating us as much as we would prefer to ignore them, but without that reunion between creator and created shadows, Dissolution of this dark mist that envelop us can never take place. It is inevitable. This is what true courage means. The decision to look into the depths of the oubliettes of our souls, to be attacked and confronted by the creatures we banished there. We, as actors, cannot die. But we need that these creatures eat away that which is not ours or us in truth so that then, as we willingly love our shadow creation, with understanding and no further judgment, light can finally pierce through and dissolve all darkness and its shadows away. No matter how clean my garden is, or how beautiful my house looks, or how wide my smile seems to others, if my basement is filled with trash and vermin, they will manifest and be reflected back at me until I admit to deal with them. Death eradicated, and truth, the living, on the stage again. I'm doing my part for myself.